I feel like we have a society that is always trying to blame other people for their problems and how they're feeling. I think one of the things is like microaggressions, like even the smallest thing that someone might be doing is affecting you. What's up, everybody? Uh, welcome to another episode of New Age Human. We have Jordan and Connor here. They, they are the hosts of Resident Skeptics. And it's actually pretty cool because I was I was watching them and uh, we were going back and forth on just the subject matter of what is a skeptic. And um, they had a really interesting guest on recently. And we were just chatting about that. But before we get into it, Jordan, Connor, thanks for coming on. I appreciate you guys. You guys are awesome. Yeah, thank you, John. Thanks for having us, John. These guys are uh, hardworking. They actually just came from recording an episode prior. And so we're like, we're here, we're doing our thing. And it's that mission to help people figure out what's going on. Just being a skeptic in a world of, I don't want to say chaos, just confusion, right? Like, it's just what's next every single time we... Uh, open up your app to whatever app you use for social media to figure out what's going on. And there's just some banana story and you're like, is this really happening? Am I like, am I dreaming? Is this a movie? Um, is it like that for you guys? Or do you have like specific places you go to for like your information? Well, we've, we've got specific places we go to, but I mean, the amount of times that I've read something and wondered, is this from Babylon B or the onion? Like there's, this has got to be satirical. There's no way this is real. And you start looking into it. Oh, it is real. Uh, yeah. that, that, that happens a lot, actually, more than I wanted to. Well, Babylon B is pretty hilarious. And then the onion as well, where you like the comedy in it is stretching the reality to where it's just like, okay, like this is obviously false, but then there comes a time where you see some article and you're like, you know what, this is not either one of those. And I'm having a hard time realizing or coming to terms with like, did that really just happen? Like, did we really just shoot a balloon out of the sky? You know, did we just like, what is going on? <laughs> Are we really wearing masks and stuff? Well, wasn't it though that Babylon B, um, they obviously do these satirical headlines. And I think one was like BLM gets like a, a peace prize or something like that. And then sure enough, like it ends up actually happening. Like that's where it starts to get super, like super weird is like when these, this satirical when the world is so nuts that satirical headlines have to get crazier and crazier in order to be funny because it's already happening in real life and when you can't tell the satirical from real life that just scares me um uh, it's it's and i think what you said though it's both chaotic and confusing it's 100 percent both do you ever feel like if it continues on this path that we're just going to get used to it if you don't talk enough about it or if you don't like it, it i see it easily getting to a place where it just seems normal like uh, like the weirdness starts to get normal and i feel like it's for those people that are really just feel like they have no time to like check facts and be be skeptical like uh, you know it's probably true i don't know because the last president we had or the last person that was in charge of this was this nuts? What do you think about that? Do you feel like, are you worried about that? Like it, it feeling like it's, it's starting to become the norm. And then like, then, then what is chaotic at this point? <laughs> yeah. Well, I've, I've certainly felt that I, I think you're right. It feels initially like the lines between reality and satire start getting blurred and, and you know, articles that are being posted from Fox or CNN on real events. Uh, with whatever skewed perspective they might give you, but they're they're real events, and they really could belong in a satirical site like Babylon Bee or The Onion. And you get all the stuff from The Simpsons that seems to just keep coming true, up to Donald Trump being president, and just other ridiculous things that really don't make any sense. But I mean, for the people that don't have time to take a couple minutes and look a story up and see if they can get a couple of sources confirming it. Uh, I, I would say you're better off not repeating the titles, uh, yeah. the headlines that you see, just leave it alone. You don't know. And unfortunately I wish that our media would do that when they report on a story and you know, so-and-so gets shot by this cop. That's this horrible thing. And they, they just run with it right off the bat. It doesn't even have to be a shooting. It, it, it can be really anything. They just, they, they run with that initial story. And before all the facts get in, before everything shows up, they've already painted the ideal picture that they would like it to be 
And, you know, sometimes they're right, but most of the times they're wrong. And, but, but people have already perpetuated the initial story so much that, you know, it gets around to stuff and it's not what happened. Our last guest, uh, I, I made a comment about what the, what the MRNA vaccine was originally created for cancer, uh, research. And turns out that's, or the MRA, MRNA technique was originally created for that. And he's like, no, that actually was not ever on the agenda. It's just a story that made it in the media, made its rounds, and now it seems to be kind of uh, a common fact, if you will. I feel like people are more committed to a narrative than actually knowing the story. And so kind of what with Connor said, like, you know, it doesn't even matter if it's true. Like, you know, someone just kind of puts it out there, but we're so engrossed with this narrative. We're almost just so obsessed with it that we're willing to bend the facts backwards um, so that it'll fit. Um, and that's kind of that's kind of an issue that I see. And that's why we kind of have resident skeptics is it's not just I, I think there's just a little bit of a misconception with the idea of skeptics of uh, that. We're just skeptical of everything, but we haven't landed on anything. Um, I can't speak for Connor, but like I've landed. Like I, I know what I believe to a point, um, but that doesn't mean that there's not nuances in there that I'm still working out. Um, because, and I was actually talking to a friend about this the other day. We were talking about um, our podcast, and I make it very clear. I hope I make it very clear that I'm a I'm a Christian. I'm a devout Christian. Um, and a lot of the things that I have an issue with sometimes is when Christians, our goal is obviously to spread the gospel. And we want people to come to Christ. That's our goal. But um, we can't force anyone to. Like, if I can talk you into it, someone can talk you out of it. So I want actually, I want people to be skeptical. I want people to actually search out for themselves if it's something that they believe. If you believe in Christianity, good, right? If you've come to the conclusion that you're not sure, okay, that's fine. But I'd rather you be skeptical about it as opposed to me just pushing you um, into a narrative. It kind of goes back actually to what Connor said about like being a kid. Um, and it's, you just kind of believe what you're told. We're trying to get people to think through, okay, what is the truth, right? How, how do we discern what the truth is? Um, and that requires a little bit of this, not just me telling you that, oh yeah, this is true. Like uh, we had, um, we had Dr. Robert Malone on, and um, in his podcast with Joe Rogan, though, one of the things that he really emphasized, he's like, listen, I'm here to give you the facts, but you have to decide what you're going to do with them. Um, and at least from my end, that's what I'm trying to do is I want people to be skeptical so that they can make it to a conclusion, not to just stay in this realm of of uncertainty and anything goes and, and moral relativism. Like, I want there to be some level of, of landing, but it only starts when you start questioning things, start being skeptical, start doing real, actual research um, and being discerning about what you're hearing. And to your point, yeah, it's I like the idea and I agree with you where what's the point of convincing somebody almost against their own will? Um, mm -hmm. You just convince them and, and and they didn't come up to their own conclusions. And so it's easy for them to snap out of it because it, it, it's just they didn't come up with it. And so if you can do it, someone else can, mm -hmm. can just pull them back out, whether it be religion, whether it be right. a belief structure, whether it be uh, something that they think is fact and, and it's is false. And just as easily as you put them into it, someone takes them right out, you know, and there's some power of mm -hmm. like right. allowing someone to be like, Hey, here's the cards. Like these are real cards. These are real facts. You mm -hmm. do the math. You, you know, you've lived this long, do the math and Hopefully you do the math and not too many people do the math. <laughs> you, 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 yeah. Everybody's stuck at like a third grade level right now. And um, it, it now it's requiring, it feels like it requires like calculus to figure out what's really going on. And then the calculus you find out is, is flawed. And now you're like, do I go to a calc teacher? And you know, you're now you figure <laughs> out who's the professional and is the professional lying to me? And what's the incentive for the professional? Like it's nuts. Like who, how do you guys feel about, or what kind of, I guess, tool do you use? Or do you have like a, some type of protocol where like this person has to have at least 10 years in this industry? Like, do you only talk to or try to seek out someone who's specifically like been in an industry for a while, has some success in it, or do, or do you fill them out or a little bit of both? I'm actually curious. Honestly, you, you kind of just have to feel it out. 
uh, you know, if you're dealing with somebody who's been there for a long time, that's good. But you could also, you know, you could also turn it around and be like, well, they're just really deep seated in the corruption and they've sat in that seat of power for a long time. So I, I don't think a, a, a length of experience is really high up on the scale as far as credentials go. Um, or at least I wouldn't base everything on it. You know, you can take it into consideration for sure. And, you know, whatever their accomplishments are and previous, uh, previous works, um, whatever you can find, uh, it's, it really is a case by case basis. And I, I don't think there's a single variable that you could use to measure them out, you know, whether they're trustworthy or not. I, I agree with Connor for sure. I don't think it's like this simple protocol. I think like for, I, I keep bringing up Dr. Robert Malone because that's a very good example of a very credible source of someone who's clearly done his research, who's uh, created certain techniques. Uh, okay, so okay, okay, that's a, it's probably a pretty reliable source to go to. Um, but, but in regards to stuff that's more, I don't know, common sense, like I kind of use a, a level of discernment to figure that out. Like, I don't need any expert for any length of years to tell me that a man is a man and a woman is a woman. I don't need it. I just don't. Um, I can use my own discernment. Um, I can use wisdom. I can just use my own eyeballs uh, to make those kind of judgments. And again, I'm going to go back to Dr. Malone again because I think he made a very good point is that a lot of us want to rely on experts um, to tell us what to do so that if anything goes wrong, well, we can blame that expert. We can blame that person. Um, but it is a lot different to try to think it through yourself and not just think it through yourself, but then act on it mm. and own up to that decision, whatever, whatever you decide to do. But I wouldn't, I agree with Connor. I just don't think that there's, we don't have a step-by-step protocol, um, for things. I will say though, um, on a more practical level, is like when we're looking at a story or something like when we did when we did like news corners in the past connor like we'd have to make sure like okay if if we have a story about something is this being corroborated by other stories like like mm -hmm. are the facts straight on this um that's very practical like don't just it's like oh um there's this buzzfeed article that's saying this you know maybe <laughs> check around uh and make sure that that's an accurate article like very simple like practical things that it's not super hard to do um although i will say though it is starting like connor kind of mentioned it is getting harder because sometimes journalists will just put things out there and they don't check their sources very well so that can be challenging but i agree with connor yeah one thing one thing when it comes to checking sources i would say uh that's helps paint you know at least the minimal amount of the picture is if you're taking if you go and just source out stories all from one source, uh, especially if you're dedicated to a certain reporter or author, uh, and it's, it's, you're solely going to, to NBC or CNN or Fox or even daily wire. And you just only go to them. You will always get whatever their, uh, their, their skewed perspective. Cause everybody's got a perspective. Every single one of them does. They're not, they're not without it. So if you're only taking in their version of events, you only have their angle on it and they might be leaving things out. They might be including other things in it. So mm -hmm. for me, cross-referencing between something as conservative as the daily wire and something as liberal as CNN or Vox, mm -hmm. you can kind of start cross-referencing which things they corroborate on as actual events. And then you'll find that there's extra things mentioned in one or not mentioned in the other. And those ones I would start taking as, with a grain of salt until they become a little bit more common of a fact. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also too, though, like, for example, like if you have, um, if you have two articles that are referencing a study and they say, this is what the study is and they don't actually link the study. That's mm -hmm. maybe a good sign that they don't want you to actually read what that study is. Like, instead of taking the article's word for it, go read the study itself. Or um, with Florida is what they called the don't say gay bill. Like, you know, read it yourself and figure out what's actually going on. Supposed to taking CNN's word for it or Fox News word for it or Daily Wire's word for it. Like, that's a very... It's a simple thing to do, but it's difficult because it actually requires mental effort on our part um, because we're very used to like the Twitter, kind of like the quick blurb of like, okay, here's what this article kind of talks about. Um, 
and we read the title and maybe we read like the first paragraph and that's kind of it. Um, but you have to actually put the work in and read the study, read the bill. Um, although I have jokes though with Connor, I feel like there's like one bill that was like 900 pages long. So maybe we was, all don't have uh, enough. <laughs> we don't have enough effort to put in, but if it's a short enough bill, I mean, you know, try, try to see if you can read it. Yeah. Well, for the 900 page one, like the people whose job it was to read the bill didn't have time to read the bill. So I don't expect <laughs> that's, well, the that's average a, okay, citizen to pull it off. a whole nother issue though. That's a whole <laughs> nother issue where they want, they want people in the house to vote on bills that can't be read through, um, in enough time, which is insane. Um, yeah, we gotta, we gotta days. split those bills up. Yeah. Maybe if, if you, if you dedicate every waking hour, to reading that bill, then maybe you can read it in a couple of days. But there's no way you can comprehend all of that. I'm sorry, but that's another John. That's another. That's another topic. <laughs> we, don't to, we don't have to get into that. Yeah, well, it, it's it's at least knowing that that's the case, and then adding that up, you're like, are you saying that you just they just created a bill that's no one's gonna, they no one's going to want to read and was released at like midnight or something like that something ridiculous where mm -hmm. and you have like a short period right. of time to read it you're like that sound that that's a red alarm that's totally a red alarm and i feel like it's almost like they don't want you to read it yeah you know <laughs> 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 i appreciate the sarcasm <laughs> <laughs> sorry i don't know if it was clear i was like they don't they might not want you to i'm just saying yeah. i'm just putting well, it out there yeah, and and it's like how crazy everything is it's like forcing people to like rethink everything right to to question things and the more people that are paying attention the more obnoxious you have to be to get away with stuff and i feel like it's a perpetual thing as more people start questioning and start asking questions and then trying to figure out what's going on the more slick you have to be and it's going to be hard to get slick you know it's going to get really really mm -hmm. obvious and i think we're at that point where it's starting to get really really obvious i mean I had I have a solution for that 900 page, um, I forgot what you call it, but that 900 page thing. I don't um, even remember what the bill was for. <laughs> I wish yeah. I remembered. But like, there's now we have a program. You know, I think uh, ChatGPT. If you dump that in there and ask it to summarize, boom, there you have it. But now you're asking something else to summarize, mm -hmm. and now you don't know mm -hmm. the limits mm -hmm. of that. So now it's I like. It reminds me of you know going back to that episode where you had dr robert malone we, i think we quoted him like five ten times already um but he did mention it's a little obnoxious <laughs> um at the very end that um making that decision on how you want to take care of your family do you want to take responsibility for all the decisions or do you want to give it to the state mm -hmm. and there's not too many people that seem to want to take responsibility what are your thoughts on taking responsibility and how important that is in um, just your freedoms? Oh, man, that's like a whole can of worms there. <laughs> um, I feel like um, I'll have to say my thing and then, and then Connor, you go for it. But I feel like we have a culture and a society that is desperate to run away from like any sort of responsibility uh, at all. I think... I think you know you can look at the sexual revolution um, and the birth control pill and and trying to and trying to get away from that responsibility and like okay what happens you know if there if there is an unplanned pregnancy the idea is like okay well you know we'll get an abortion and then no one has to no one has to take responsibility um, and again you know I don't know where you stand on the pro life pro choice spectrum but I know one thing's for sure is that when you do choose that abortion there is a level of responsibility that's not being taken. Um, obviously, you know, besides, besides the case um, of rape, um, I feel like we have a society that is always trying to blame other people for their problems and how they're feeling. I think one of the things is like microaggressions, like even the smallest thing that someone might be doing is affecting you. Um, I'm very familiar with um, universities and a lot of universities, uh, they have, they're very soft, I think is the best word. Like they're a very soft population where they need a lot of safe spaces and they need uh, a lot of messages and stuff. So I just feel like we've created an entire society that doesn't know 
how to take responsibility anymore. Um, and I have in pretty much I've, almost every podcast, it, I feel like it always comes back down to the, to the breakdown of the family. I feel like when you break that down and there's no responsibility that, that can be had there because you're taking away, you know, fatherhood, uh, motherhood, being committed to one man, being committed to one woman. Um, if you start removing those and saying, no, you can be sexually free um, to do whatever you want, um, you start to break that down and you slowly start to take away uh, that accountability. That's that's kind of that's kind of my thoughts on it anyway. My thoughts will probably be a little bit shorter. Um, but at least where I am in my life right now, uh, the way I look at it, as far as you and your, your family that you're taking care of or are responsible for, whether you choose to listen to the experts or not listen to them, you are responsible, not them. They can give you mm -hmm. their professional opinion, their guidance, whether it's correct or not. Uh, but it, ultimately it does fall to your own judgment to listen to them or not listen to them. And that is where it comes down to the individual's responsibility to look into the answers or solutions they're being presented or the news, whatever it might be. Uh, and, and, you know, if their decision is to accept whatever they're being told blindly, that is their choice. And if things go great, mm -hmm. they made a good decision. And if things go horribly wrong, it's still their decision and they're still responsible. Yeah, I think yeah. the um, the whole responsibility and taking that into consideration in your actions is is a huge role that people just disregard, and it's almost like it's being taught to say, "Hey, you know what? It's okay to make mis make mistakes, and if you make a mistake, someone else is going to take care of it." You're going to make so many mistakes, and you're not going to think about the repercussions. And if if the repercussion, mm -hmm. if you're insured financially and socially for your repercussions, I can see people willing to take more risks without thinking about what they're risking. And mm -hmm. I feel like a huge, I guess, message to help people with is to push the whole, like take responsibility of your actions. And if, if you know that if you were going to be held responsible for everything you did i know you would do things differently i know people would do things differently they, they would reconsider yeah. a lot of decisions that they make because of being triggered and the thought process will go more than just one step into the future it'll, it'll go several steps because now you're thinking about family and if you're and then to your point i think uh jordan was saying as far as like a lot of it could also do uh do with not having that nuclear family that's held together where you have everybody separate and so you don't have anybody that has your back anymore everybody feels by themselves and now the institutions are are the ones raising your family and not you and no wonder parents aren't getting the respect and no wonder the grandparents are getting the respect and everybody's pretty much scattered um and i i, I mm. The reason why I, I went that direction is because it's one of those things that um, inhibits, in my opinion, inhibits people from being able to uh, to be a skeptic, to, to, to rethink things because um, some people are just too busy trying to pick up the pieces of a scattered family. And at the same time, if you have a scattered family, then you don't really have that emotional support. You don't have that financial support. Um, and a lot of the support goes away. So now you're responsible for everything. And do you really have time to do the research? If someone, if, if an article comes across your plate, um, like you're eating articles, <laughs> comes across your screen <laughs> and you're like, what is this? You, if, and if you're freaking out, who do you talk to? Do you talk to family? Do you talk to a friend? How long have you known that friend for? Are, are they karmically or are they socially responsible for you probably not you know you know like everybody has that friend mm. where you ask them hey what do you do you think i should do this and they're like yeah go ahead no worries because it doesn't matter to them they're not tied to you if you go disappearing they're going to just continue with their life but if it's a family member and and something happens it's 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 on them and they have to answer to the rest of the family right mm -hmm. um so yeah. i yeah yeah 
you 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 bring up an interesting point though um, about the idea of of scattering um, where so you have you have these broken homes right and and honestly i don't mean just broken homes in the sense of mom and dad aren't together there can be i think there are broken homes where mom and dad are together um it's just not a very good environment right um and so now we have another added component and so i'm talking about um let's say i'm talking more about like maybe 12 to 18 year olds at this point um so most of them have a smartphone right um, they have that smartphone and their family is falling apart or maybe, honestly, maybe their family's healthy and they're just a normal teenager that doesn't think the world understands them, right? Um, been there, done that. Um, I imagine most of us have here. Um, maybe not Connor. I don't know. May I feel like Connor might not have. We haven't had that discussion yet. <laughs> um, but they go to they go to these, you know, like Instagram or they go to Reddit or you know another online community to try to fill this void that they have. And so I think part of being skeptical, and I want to add the word critically thinking to that as well. I think that's important. Um, is that they're not. They're not of the mind. You first have to get yourself in the mindset of actually critically thinking. We don't have a society that does that. We have a society that emotionally thinks. Mm -hmm. So if I have someone that's validating how I feel um, or what I think I'm feeling, you know, then I'm going to just latch on to that because it makes me feel good anyway. And so I'm not even in the zone of critically thinking. I'm just in a place of I feel like things are scattered or I don't feel understood or my family really is broken. It's like, oh, hey, these people really understand me. Um, and sometimes that can lead to really damaging things. And I think this is something I guarantee you this is going to get talked about more and more um, as we have more detransitioners coming out of, of people that thought that they were the opposite gender um, and realized, you know, maybe even a short couple years later or less time than that, and that wasn't the case. And they've literally mutilated their body um, trying to believe something. It's absolutely heartbreaking. Um, but you have a lot of young people doing that. But I think that's a big problem is that we're, we're scattered and we find a lot of int like interest group communities online, so we're still alone. Like it's such a weird space to be in, um, and I think it leaves a lot of people really vulnerable. Um, and so they don't know how to critically think. They're just emotionally thinking. They're emotionally just trying to get out of uh, whatever they're in. Yeah. You have anything to say, Connor, on that, or? Oh, nothing else to add to that. <laughs> Um, no, I, I, I do see. Yeah. And I like how you brought that up and, um, the emotional versus critical and, and my mind and how I understand it, when you are in survival mode, you're in that need to make a decision quick mode. And a lot of the times it's an emotional driver. And when there's always something to be afraid of, you're going to fe be in that fear mode and you're going to be emotional. And it's going to be up to the people that have the support of whether it be a family or, um, and it doesn't have to be like the traditional family, just people that support you and, and they consider you like blood relatives to help you be at ease enough to critically think. And I think that's a huge part of what's needed now is, is feeling safe enough to critically think, to stop down, stop down, <laughs> to stop and just, you know, stop the scroll and just look at it. What's going on? Who else is talking about this? Like you said, what are the sources? And then what are the sources skewing to towards politically, morally, what's their background? And it takes time, you know, and it's almost like you have to find that friend that you trust to help you out if you're not into in that space. So, um, it takes someone like you guys, the resident skeptics to help weed out the, uh, the, the craziness and bring people that have some credibility or real stories of people actually dealing with it and what they actually dealt with instead of what the tabloids said, Hey, you know what? They, they were talking about me and this is what really went down. This is what the reporters mm -hmm. were saying versus what I said. And this is the paperwork I had to deal with. This is the, the amount of money it took 
to pay the lawyers or whatever. Like, you know, you guys do a good job mm -hmm. of making it real and finding the people that went through it instead of, of, of hearsay, you know? So I do appreciate mm -hmm. that. And I think that's a, that's a good um, place to close on because you guys really hit the nail on the head when it comes to just like w w our, the conversation did, which is like, you know, like what does it take to be a skeptic and, and what are some of the things that may cause people to not be discerning enough and believe in the falsehoods of, of, of the chaos that's out there, you know? So I hope that um, we helped somebody who's listening be encouraged a little bit more on being more skeptic, encouraged a little bit more in rethinking how maybe your life is putting you into a place where you feel like you don't have the time. Maybe you can rethink, you know, am, am I in a place of stability? And, you know, like, do I want to, you know, prolong this scattered lifestyle? Um, do you guys have any, um, any comments on that? Any closing comments that maybe something came across your head and you're like, oh man, I should have said that. I, I mean, the I one would thing just that say... I'll let Jordan go. Go ahead, Connor. You go. You go. <laughs> um, I would just say that when you run into somebody that has a different opinion, don't shout them down. Shut them down. Uh, this type of intolerance for differing opinions and schools of thought it, it will tear our country apart. It's torn families apart. It's torn cities and counties and states apart. Uh, and now our country, it feels like at its at its core, it's being torn apart. And so when somebody has a different opinion... You know, take the time to, to listen to it because they might have some valid points. Maybe they have something that you haven't thought about and you have something that uh, you can learn from them. And hopefully they will also return that same that same treatment to you as you explain your point of view. But it's, it's really it's not worth getting in an argument over politics and and splitting up friendships and families. It's just at, at the end of it, politics is not going to be there at your bedside when you're sick or dying mm -hmm. uh, or when you're, you're suffering a tragic loss. Mm -hmm. Like they're just, they're not there, but your friends and family are there and it's, it's not worth screwing up those relationships over it. I agree. Yeah, no, I, I, I completely agree with that. And I was going to say something along the same vein of, you know, be willing to have those conversations. And, but you mentioned a safe place, um, a safe place to talk, at least for me, what I would call a safe space is, open being able to openly discuss ideas without ridiculing the other person or shooting them down like a safe place is where you can say things that are controversial um, and that you can have an open discussion about it so i would encourage anyone who's listening to this um, if someone has a view that you don't agree with um, ask them questions, ask them to define their stance because terms mean different things to other people. Um, and Connor's absolutely right. Like at the end of the day, we don't have to destroy our entire network of people over political belief systems. Um, I, I think you can actually, I tell Connor all the time, I'm like, I wish we could just kind of be like the olden days and like go to a pub and like men would sit around and discuss their different ideas and disagree with each other and be friends at the end of the day. Um, I really wish that could be the case. And I still have some hope, not, uh, not a ton, uh, but some hope <laughs> that that could still happen. I think it can still happen. It doesn't seem as likely now, but uh, you guys bring some valid points in and I think someone's going to get something from this for sure. If we can help one person, right? Um, but there's mm -hmm. a lot of people that, that I talk to that listen to this podcast and I know that they'll appreciate this. So when I do get that feedback, I will share that with you guys. Cause yeah, it, it's getting feedback is awesome. It's just awesome. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, thanks. We, appreciate yeah, we, we get some negative feedback a lot of the times <laughs> <laughs> we get a lot of fun name calling and, uh, it's a good time, but every once in a while we get a really nice comment and it makes our day. That's so. awesome. Yeah, for sure. Do you feel like it's that one comment that kind of makes all the, like, I mean, like if you, it, it, people love to be negative and if, you, if there's like five negative comments and there's one positive, do you use that to like kill that energy of the five negative comments that you just read? Or is it more of like, you know what, it is what it is. Uh, you know, like I'm just going to give energy to the positive ones. Yeah. I'd say that's probably accurate. It's just like try to try to just focus on, Focus on the positive ones. Um, 
I mean, also, I mean, I, I'm a, I'm probably a little bit more sensitive than Connor, where like it definitely, it definitely reminds me that there's, you know, as as we keep growing, like there is going to be like a larger target on our back. Um, so you are going to get um, some of those negative things. That's just kind of the way it is, mm -hmm. and you just have a bunch of trolls out there, so nothing you can do. You guys are strong. You guys got it. <laughs> I'm excited for you guys. I see big things for you guys. You guys are already doing big stuff, so. Thank you again for coming on to the show, and I wish you all the success. Appreciate it, John. Thank Thanks, you for having John. us on. Thanks, John. We really appreciate it. <laughs>